M4 Mac Mini NAS. It's like a regular M4 Mac Mini, but NAS. This stands for Network Attached Storage. Pretty much, I'm gonna take this Mac Mini, I'm gonna plug all this stuff into it, and then install some software on it to make it so that it can do what this thing normally does, my Synology NAS, which is nothing more than just a tiny computer back there, a much weaker computer than the M4 Mac Mini, mind you, with a built-in RAID controller, a couple of slots for some SATA drives, and then a network adapter so it can sit and live on your local network and perform a variety of tasks. With this pile of peripherals, a five gigabit USB-C to Ethernet adapter, a Thunderbolt dock, a USB-C hub called a liquidity pool too, and then a bunch of external SSD drives. And yes, commenter, I recognize that some of you may have a hard time trusting the fact that everything's connected over USB-C cables, Thunderbolt cables, as opposed to a more permanent thing like built-in storage or PCIe cards for a Windows desktop that are screwed down. But nothing's moving back there after my desk is set up. There are no cats in this garage. I don't have any kids with their sticky, grabby hands. And it's a fine idea to occasionally reset your computer anyways, which will reconnect any Thunderbolt or USB-C accessory that unmounts itself for whatever reason anyway. Before I get to all of these extra things. Here's why you might want a NAS to be part of your home network. Well, these are the reasons I have one on mine. One, centralized storage, accessible from anywhere on the local network, and with a couple of extra steps, anywhere in the world. A variety of storages, in my case, in transforming my Mac Mini into a NAS. I've already said NAS way too many times here. I'm starting with this Amazon Basics, of all things, Thunderbolt Hub, that's gonna spread out one of my Thunderbolt ports into three more Thunderbolt ports for some of the peripherals that don't need 40 gigabits per second. The whole thing will be capable of 40 gigabits per second, but it'll be shared over these three ports. So depending on what each one of them is doing, there'll be less available. So the first thing that gets hooked up is this USB-C hub. The hub is for a keyboard and mouse, since this is also gonna be a computer station that is just gonna stay set up on my desk back there. But this particular hub from Orico also has a one terabyte NVMe SSD built into it. So this thing is gonna be my initial Plex repository. More on that in a minute. But the next thing I'm gonna be attaching is this Zeke. This one has a Thunderbolt 4 connection, so it's a super fast drive also with an NVMe built in. This can read and write at like 5,000 megabytes per second. And since I have a 10 gigabit network in my studio, I can centrally store my Final Cut Pro project files. That's the application I use to edit these videos, which means I'll be able to access this drive from my MacBook here over at this desk. Because over at this desk, I also have a five gigabits per second USB-C to ethernet adapter. I do that into my MacBook Pro, and then I get a speedy access to this drive, even though it's over there on the other side of the room. That way I can access the same video files, whether I'm editing over here at this desk or back there at that desk and continue editing wherever I left off without having to move files back and forth. I like to switch up where I'm sitting throughout the day, you know, keep things interesting working from home. Plus this way I don't have to beat up as much on my MacBook Pro's SSD. Next, I'm plugging in a second super fast drive. This is my other one terabyte drive from Orico. It's called the Mini Mate. This thing just fits. It's the same size, so it fits right underneath your Mac Mini. Thunderbolt 4 cable, two plugs that in. This drive will be used exclusively for Mac OS Time Machine backups. Anytime I come back from a trip, I travel for work a lot, and I travel with my MacBook Pro. So when I come back from a trip, as long as I'm on the Wi-Fi or plugged into the network with this adapter, I can mount this drive from the Mac Mini onto my MacBook Pro. And this drive is set up so that anytime it mounts, it automatically does a time machine backup. Doesn't matter if I'm sitting out by the pool just on Wi-Fi or if I'm plugged into the hard line with this five gig ethernet adapter thing. Although it will back up like five times faster over the ethernet. So whenever the time comes where I eventually destroy this thing all the way, look at these dings I already got in here. That's a real nice deep one. Or whenever it finally gets stolen from some show office at a venue in New York, I'll be able to call upon these backups and restore a brand new computer to this one's previous state. And all of these drives are accessible from anywhere in the world over the internet from a free piece of software called Tailscale. You just install that on both computers and then you can mount, for instance, your time machine backup drive from 1500 miles away. My home internet is one gigabyte up and down. So as long as the internet I'm accessing it from is also pretty fast, this is a super useful way to have access to very large or very specific files when you're away from home. It's like having a six terabyte thumb drive in your pocket. Number three, are we on three? A Plex media server. Plex is a software that makes it so you can take movies, TV shows, or video files that you have physically stored on your computer and play them on any TV or computer or phone that's on your local network. And if you pay one time for the Plex pass, you can play those files on any TV in the world as long as 
as you have internet. So I can continue right where I left off, watching Back to the Future 2 in some hotel in New York, through Plex, and basically my Mac Mini NAS is my own personal Netflix server. And I recognize this is a bit of a gray area, but I want to be clear that I do pay for Apple TV. So when I do things like download the entire second season of Silo, I've already paid for that show, dang it. I just want to be able to watch it from the plane with Wi-Fi. And finally, the fourth reason to set up your computer this way is a RAID 1 mirrored disk array. With this contraption, and really this is just two more external NVMe SSDs docked side by side in an aluminum case for heat dissipation. See, there's another SSD in here. But in here, I've got two two terabyte NVMe drives and they're set up in a RAID 1 configuration mind my cord management. Mac has its own built-in RAID controller. You can take any two drives that are the same size and media type, in this case, two NVMe drives, open up disk utility, go to file and choose RAID assistant, tell it to set up a mirrored RAID 1. And what this does is combine these two physically separate two terabyte drives into what will mount as one two terabyte SSD on your desktop. Any file that you drop into that drive will get copied across both physical drives. And this is good because SSDs do occasionally and eventually fail due to a random defect or who knows what else, but you really do want to store priceless data files in a way to where if one of these drives does fail, the other one still has all the data. And this thing makes it super easy to replace the failed drive. You literally just pull this out, pluck it out, and then just drop in a new one. No tools needed. Then the next time you turn it on, it'll automatically copy all the data over to the new drive that you just put in there. You'll have two copies again and you will never lose your most precious files. This for me is my photo library from my big camera. My Lightroom library is pretty big and it goes back over a decade. So I've offloaded it onto this RAID and I actually keep a second copy on this RAID on my Synology NAS. So there are four copies of all those pictures. And then also things like my Bitcoin wallet seed phrase. If you lose that 12 word phrase, that money can get locked away forever. And wow, is that scary. So I keep several copies of that hidden away, definitely not in a file named Bitcoin wallet seed phrase. And then on the front of the Mac mini here is the five gig ethernet adapter because I was cheap when I bought this thing and I went with the standard gigabit ethernet. That's only 125 megabytes per second. And my network switch is 10 gigs. So a five gig ethernet adapter is an affordable alternative to a 10 gig ethernet adapter. It's five times faster than normal, it's pretty dang fast. It just makes file transfers go really fast. And it makes possible this thing that I've always wanted to do ever since I saw how Linus Tech Tips edits their videos, even though it doesn't help me in any way to do this really. But I've always wanted to edit my videos from one place over a network on a drive that's in another place. This five gig adapter makes that possible. Anyway, the M4 Mac mini can handle all of these things and while doing that, still also just be a desktop computer. These CPUs and GPUs have so much overhead. Headroom? They have so much headroom. So I don't know, if you've got a kid and you've given that kid a Mac mini as his desktop computer for school or whatever kids use computers for, Memin. You can make use of it in this way while your kid still uses it to have ChatGPT do his homework. How about that now? Goodbye. I pushed the button for too long on the smoke machine. NAS. Oh, smokeless. It's cardboard. Everything's fine.